Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're continuing with our association database. This is part seven of how many? I don't know. Until I get sick of it, I guess. <laughs> Until you guys tell me that you're done with it. <laughs> In this video, we're going to be continuing working with our helper data. We're going to make the combo boxes on our other forms to pick helper data based on what that field is. So person type, payment type, and so on. All right, starting out with part seven. Now, as you've noticed, what I've been doing at the beginning of every video is making a copy of the database file. Now, I'm doing this for the gold members when they can download their database, right? This will be part seven. But I was also thinking, this is something that I do when I'm developing a database, and it's not a bad idea for you to get in the habit of doing this too. When you sit down for the day to do any major work on your database, make a copy of your front end file. That way, if you goof something up tremendously, as I have in the past many times, then you can always go back to the previous version. Of course, you should have nightly backups. I got a whole video on backing up, but this is just one more step to make sure that, you know, anytime you have in your head, hey, I'm gonna make a major change today, you know, make a backup copy of your front end file. But of course, like I said, make sure you've got good nightly backups running. All right, so part seven. In part six, we built the helper forms. Where are you? The helper type form with the helper form inside of it. So now what we're gonna do in this part is we're going to actually uh, put the combo boxes here on the other forms to use that helper data. How do we get a list of just what we want? So let's start with the person type ID. All right, we've got our helper type, which is person type, member, mentor, clergy, leader, whatever, however you want to categorize your people. All right, so I need to make a combo box on this form that shows the helper data, right, from the helper table, where the helper type ID equals one. Okay, so let's do that. Right click, design view. Let's put this, um, eh, we'll put it down at the bottom. I'll make the notes field smaller. We'll put it down here. All right, let's get a combo box. Drop it down here. Looking up the values from a table or query. Next, we're looking up the data from the helper table. Next. Now, what data do we want in the combo box? Well, I want the helper ID and I want the helper value. I don't need the helper type ID in the combo box. But we are gonna use it for a criteria in just a minute. Next, let's sort this by the helper value. Next, that's what it's gonna look like. Don't worry that you can see everything in here, that's fine. Next, we're gonna save that value in the person type ID. This is the data that we're capturing. Next, what label do you want? Person type, and there we go. A little conditional formatting from that guy. Not conditional. Format painter. <laughs> All right. And we'll slide this guy out like so. Now, let's save it and take a look at what we got. Open it up. Drop it down. Now, you're seeing everybody in here. Every bit of helper data is in here. So, we have to limit this list now. I only want to see helper items where the helper type ID equals one. Okay. How do we do that? Well... You could make a whole bunch of queries if you wanted to based on the helper table and say, you know, where helper type ID equals one, helper type ID equals two, blah, 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 blah. But that's why you want to learn SQL because knowing SQL, we can go right into the row source for this combo box and put the criteria directly in here. This is what the wizard does is it builds this SQL statement. First thing I'm gonna do, I don't like combo 40. Let's change that real quick. Let's call that the person type combo. That's what I like to do. It's just how, so I know when I'm coding later, whether if it's ID, I know it's just a text box. If it's combo, I know it's combo box. All right, back to the data. All right, this is why it's important to learn SQL, folks. I'm gonna zoom in, Shift F2. And as a reminder, I got tons of lessons and, and seminars and all kinds of stuff on SQL. It's very important if you're gonna be a serious access developer to learn SQL. This is a free video that'll get you started on how to use SQL with access. I think I mentioned this in one of the previous classes. 
All right, so we're gonna clean this up a little bit. Again, since I'm only bringing in data from one table, I don't need the helper T dot there or these brackets, since I don't have spaces in my names. This makes it a lot easier to read. Okay, so it's select helper ID, helper value, from helper T, order by helper value. What do I gotta add to this? Just like before, I have to add a where condition. What's the where? Where helper type ID equals one. I'm gonna hard code a one in there because it's specific to this box. Okay. Hit okay. Close this, we're gonna save this, close it down, open it back up again. And now drop the box down and look at that. I'm seeing only helper type ID one. There's my person types. All right, let's say Ben Cisco is, oh, he's clergy. He's the, he's the prophet, right? <laughs> emissary, emissary, emissary of the prophets, brain fart. <laughs> okay, we could put that right down here, emissary of the prophets. Of, and if Quark was involved, it'd be of the prophets, right? <laughs> I spelled emissary wrong? Yeah, I can't, I can't do anything right today, can I? Boy, okay, emissary, there we go. All right, go to someone else, close that. Let's go to Alex Lifeson, drop it down. And he's a mentor, let's see, he's a guitar teacher, okay. All right, let's do another one. Uh, gender, marital status, all these we're gonna do on the demographics form, which we haven't built yet, but we do have payment type ID and payment details. So let's do a payment type ID. Actually, we can unbold those. I bolded these earlier to remind me to do them. Now we can unbold these. See my little notes down here? Yeah, okay. This is another thing that I do also, and I do this for classes, but I also do it when I'm developing, when I have my roadmap, okay, my tables and stuff all in Excel. I also, when I'm done for the day, I say next up, what do I wanna, what do I wanna cover next? So I don't always plan every step of it out as I'm going, you know, things come up that, oh, okay, I gotta remember to do that next. So this is what I'm gonna do next. And yes, today we'll have an extended cut. All right, so for payment type, let's come in here. Design view. Now, from now on, I can copy these things, right? Copy, paste. Okay, payment type. And this will be the payment type combo. Well, we gotta change the control source, right? It's person type ID still. We have to change, it's, this is bound to the, did I not add that? Oh, there it is up here. Okay, payment type ID. See, I was looking on the bottom because that's where it was on the roadmap. And this will be payment type combo. Remember, control source is where this control is bound in the table. So when you pick a value, that's where it saves its value from. But where it saves its value from and where it gets its list of values from are two different things. Control source is where you save your data. The data row source I always mix up row source and control source. Row source is for combo boxes and list boxes, right? Now this is gonna change just slightly. We have to just change the helper type ID. And what was it? I'm gonna have to go and take a look at my table because I forget. The helper type table, payment type is two. Nice and convenient, right? Okay, so back into here, we change this to two. That's all. So for every box you got, you just gotta put the right type in there. Now that's, why it's important to make sure that you don't just let anybody willy-nilly into your helper tables, okay? In fact, I, I usually don't um, allow the, the users to access the helper type table at all. And as far as the helper data goes, this stuff, you wanna be very careful too because some of this stuff might be hard-coded in your database. These are now hard-coded in your database. So if someone accidentally deletes two, well, now you're just messed because if you add another one down here, it's gonna come in at six. Yeah, there's tricks to get back, missing auto numbers, there's all kinds of things you can do, but just don't let people in here, <laughs> okay? All right, so now, save it, close it, open it back up again. What is your payment type? Oh, look at that, cash, check, credit card, see? And you can put the payment details in another box. I'm not gonna put payment details on here right now. You, you get the point, right? You put the credit card number down here, expiration date, whatever else you want. Okay. So now as far as editing this list goes, again, I don't like giving my end users the ability to edit this stuff. 
And again, in my ABCD video, I do show you how you can make certain items locked. You can use a list items edit form if you want to. I don't recommend it. And you could have that pop up the helper type form. Okay, but then you'd have to go to the right one. Uh, hint, that's what I'm, what's up. I can't talk today. That's what I'm going to be showing in the extended cut, by the way, for the members. Uh, you can double click on this guy and have it pop up to the right helper type here and let them edit these things. Okay, but generally, I like to reserve that for like an administrator like you. Okay, you'll have your own little way to get into these forms. All right, maybe a button on the main menu with a password, which again, I've got videos for that. In my input box video, for example, I show you how to make a manager menu. And then when you click on the manager menu button here to open this, it asks you for a password. And that's one way you can keep people out of like your helper tables and your helper forms and stuff. All right, so members. I am going to show you how to make it so you can double click here and then it'll open up the helper type form and then you can make a change and then come back here. Very similar to what we did with the family stuff. And yeah, we'll throw a password in there too. So in the extended cut for the members, we're going to make it so you can double click on the combo box. It'll open up the helper type form to that specific helper type ID lets you change or add or delete items. And then when you close this, it'll bring you back to this combo box and even open it up for you and show you the new item. It'll require that box. Then we'll add a manager password. So when you double click on that, you got to type in a password to prove that you're a manager. Then we'll make it so it's sticky. So in other words, once you type in the manager password, it'll assume you're the manager for the rest of that session. And it won't keep making you type the password in every time. Okay. So that's all covered in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos and gold members can download these databases. But that is your fast tip for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and I'll see you for part eight soon. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry. These free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all. One dollar. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. 
Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.